done by Slowbang. Um, strange name. But uh, basically, I set this up with a warm light, a cold light, and a key light. Basic features. So first things first is when it comes to anti-aliasing, um, one of the, the issues that Stev pointed out was that anti-aliasing is, is terrible when Cycle's default is blurry. It just feels blurry. And that's true. And the reason is, is because, um, uh, let's take a closer look at this image. If we take a look at this line here, this line isn't blurring. Uh, and if you look at these edges here, they are blurry. You can see that there's like three pixels of blurriness, four pixels almost, between the lines here. This is the default cycle settings. You can look at these black lines here. They start to get blurred over by this kind of like halo. Um, this is pure ref, so which kind of interpolates the blurriness of the pixels. But you can tell that the anti-aliasing is not great. So what happens if, um, if we go into our render settings, and you go into underneath film inside the render settings, you have a pixel filter. So Cycles uses this pixel filter filter to define your anti-aliasing, and this defines how sharp your render is going to be. So the default is 1.5 pixels, so with a Blackman Harris filter. So 1.5 pixels basically says look one and a half pixels to your neighbor and then blend between these neighbors with the Blackman Harris algorithm to define how sharp I should make the detail. You have three options. You've got box, you've got Gaussian, and you have the width of the pixels. Uh, box doesn't have a width because a box is basically up, down, left, and right. It's like a star shape um, with one setting, one pixel. Gaussian is kind of, uh, if you know what the Gaussian algorithm is, it's kind of like a, a blurry dot, I guess you could say, with the same width. And then a Blackman-Harris is probably a lot more, uh, I don't know how it is exactly, but it's a little different than Gaussian. And it also has the width. So let's take a closer look. So here I've rendered a Gaussian with one pixel uh, anti-aliasing. And if we zoom in, you can tell immediately that now the edge of this frame is a lot sharper. It's almost like one or two pixels different. The edges down here, you can actually see like the little dark edge of the wood shadow. It's a little jagged because there's not a lot of resolution. So now the difference between sharpness is, okay, so one, you have resolution, which gives you more pixels, but anti-aliasing is what gives you basically the concept of how the pixels interpolate between each other. So now you can take a look at this black edge here, and it's no longer fuzzy. It's a lot sharper. This is just one pixel. You can um, tell that sometimes from further out, like about this distance, you can see the tiny shadow is jagged, or this wooden thing here is jagged. That's the trade-off, but this is one pixel. Let's take a look at box. So box is similar to Gaussian at one pixel. It's uh, even cleaner, a lot sharper. Like, take a look at that. Nice and jagged, nice and sharp. Very cool. This is a HD frame, so it's not 4K. But um, these frames are taking about one minute to render. And then uh, let's go back to the default, Blackman Harris, but let's drop it by uh, 20, uh, 0 0.25 pixels. So here it is, and it looks actually pretty decent. Less jagged, still relatively sharp, and it's better. So let's do a small comparison. So here we have the default, very blurry. The default blurry, 1.5 pixels, super blurry. That's the default. Now let's move over to one pixel Gaussian, a lot sharper. Now let's move over to box, uh, less detail, but it's still relatively sharp. And now let's move over to um, Blackman, uh, the Blackman, but at 1.25 pixels. And let's compare it with the default. So here's the default. And here is the Blackman at 1.25. And you can obviously tighten up the default as well, or use the Gaussian, or use whichever one works. But basically, if you want sharper anti-aliasing, as you can see, the Blackman is kind of fuzzy by default. Even when I drop, uh, I mean, okay, sorry, it's this one. It's a little fuzzy a little bit to kind of smooth these sharp edges here. but it's good at like um, keeping things relatively nice and smooth and detailed like that. 
So if you're finding problems with your sharpness in your image and your render, make sure you, you have got good resolution, but also change your pixel uh, filter and make it work so that you have a nice, a nicer, sharper image. I found, I quite like the results of 1.25. Uh, one pixel kind of like makes it a bit too jagged. So I like 1.25 or 1.2, maybe even 1.1, which is kind of pushing it. Um, Slink mentions that Gaussian is similar to like putting a sharpness filter. That is correct because that's what it does. Sharp, the sharpness, the sharpness filter basically pulls in the pixels and does the reverse process of anti-aliasing using a similar uh, algorithm like Gaussian. All right, so that's the first thing you need to keep in mind. Um, the other thing you need to keep in mind is uh, contrast with your images. So if I'm in here with my compositing tree and you need to look at your levels, um, a big problem with product shots is a lot of people keep them in clay renders or or they just have a simple white light or studio lights with just white lights, for example. A good trick to help your products pop out is to use their logo colors as fill lights. So for example, imagine this was a logo that had uh, an orange or a reddish and blue. So I could use the red and blue from the logo as my fill light, as my side light, as my backlight, and as my key light. I have three lights here. The key light is white, but all the other lights are warm and cold. So if you want contrast between your colors, you also want a little bit of warm and a little bit of cold, if you can, to bring out the pop of your product. And the other thing you want to do is with your denoising, this is a trick that you know, Stev, um, which was mixing in the denoise data, but not 100%. So I mix in the denoise data at like 75% or less into the original image with a sample count of the more or less 100 and 118. I quite, the sweet spot for me is 118, which gives me an HD frame like this really easy, about one minute per frame. And it preserves most of the detail that I need. Um, I turn off things that you need to, like, things you don't need, turn it off. So, for example, in your light paths, for example, use... Uh, two is usually, if you really want to get away with murder, just use two total light balances or maybe three or four max. Diffuse two, glossy two, transmission, if you have transmission, um, I put it to about four maybe, or eight, but usually I turn it off if I don't have any transmissive materials. Same with transparent, I turn that off if I don't have any. Reflective caustics, refractive caustics, I turn that off as well. Turn on fast GI approximation, and all of this just helps things go a lot faster. Uh, concerning performance as well, use tiling, sure. Uh, spatial splits. If I'm doing animation, I will turn this on. If it's a still frame, I will keep that off. So spatial split basically helps the BVH or the dependency graph of Blender to remember what has happened, a bit like persistent data. And it splits things up spatially in like chunks in the RAM and makes it easier. So persistent data also is very handy to, uh, for animation. So I'll turn those on for animation or turn these off if it's a still frame. And if you want viewport performance, obviously you can turn, change the pixel size. So all of these settings here are um, little things that I use for optimization um, concerning animation. And if you're using adaptive sampling, I usually put a time limit or at least minimum samples of like whatever I need. Minimum samples with the time limit. Time limits usually cap things. Um, but this is good for previews. If you don't need to cap things and just want to let a render sit until it's done, then I like to have the adaptive samples with a minimum at least 48, 96, 128, or my sweet spot, 118. So those are the little tips that I have with uh, speed rendering. I hope that answers a bit of your question. Is like uh, work your, if you want things to be sharper by default, change your filter size and the method. And also when it comes to uh, denoising, this is the trick that you know, is like don't use the full denoised image to remove all detail because sometimes denoising destroys tiny detail. So for example, if I was in my... Uh, render here and whoops let's just there it is 
So if I take a look at this wood, this denoising uh, texture that I have on this wood, the denoiser will destroy some of this detail just because it can. And that's why I don't use the full denoised image at 100%. I only use it at 75%, 50%, maybe even 30%, or even 25% if the original image without the denoised is pretty good to mainly preserve that sharp detail in my textures of the actual material. And work the filter size. The filter size really makes big differences. I wish we had more options. For example, Mitchell, Lanxos. Lanxos, I love Lanxos. If you want to a sharp, sharp, sharp image, um, what I would do is I'll render it two times the size and then resize it using Lanxos. If I can use, if, um, if you use like a image resizing software, like a uh, fast stone photo resizer, which is free, which you can batch resize images, which is really good for whatever you need or, or otherwise you can, uh, go to your advanced options or resizing. And when you resize, use Lanxos three or Lanxos two. So I find uh, instead of using bilinear, bicubic, um, the, the idea of making your image really sharp without sharpening uh, and popping random pixels by the edges we're using a sharpening filter with Gaussian or whatever, um, render your image larger. And when it's larger, scale it down using the correct filters, which are really nice, like Lanxos. Bilinear is not great. Bicubic is not great. It's a little blurry. Beast plan is eh, not so great. Mitchell is pretty decent. Linear, not great. Nearest, not great at all. Triangle, okay. Lanxos 2 is the sharpest one. Fast linear is like it's super quick to, to process. But Lanxos is specially designed for rescaling and keeping sharp detail, making things really nice and crisp. So if you can, scale, uh, render big scale smaller and use Lanxos on top of the filtering of your anti-aliasing. And this will make things uh, without using the terrible uh, pixel damaging concepts of using sharpening filters from something like Photoshop, for example. So that's a little tip as well that I have. Like if I really, really need to keep my detail without destroying anything is uh, remove my denoiser completely if I can, render bigger, take the samples that I need, use a tiny bit of denoiser to get rid of the tiny bit of noise, and then scale it down to what I actually need using the Lanxos. <laughs> Christoph says Lanxos makes him so tall. <laughs> so those are some tips for that. So Slink, how are we doing for time? Whew. Just in the nick of time. 